So in this video, I'm going to speak about creating a port channel. Do not skip any part of the video because I have some very important information for you. You do not really want to lose any of them. If you have not subscribed to my channel, consider clicking on that subscribe button. Also hit that like button. That's going to be a huge support for the channel. Now, let's speak about uh, port channel and port channel usages. Normally, when we want to have increased bandwidth between two switches, in my case, next switches, what I need to do is to utilize and, and connect these switches using multiple links. If this one is a 10 GB link and this one is a 10 GB link, what I really want to have is a 20 GB link. None of the ports should be, uh, let's say, blocked. Spanning three blocks, one of the uh, blocks, all the ports except one on one side, and just lets the other side to be uh, forwarding. But you can see that only one of the links is going to be utilized when spanning three is in place. So what we want to do is to stop this behavior by bundling these two ports into one port channel. Now, do we get a 20 gigabit per second link in here? Not really. What we get is two 10 gigabit per second links that work side by side and they can be utilized based on the flows that we have what is a flow a flow has several uh, characteristics that's going to be your uh, let's say ip addresses this can be source and destination ip addresses we can have protocol Again, if we prefer the protocol is something like UDP and TCP, most of the time that's going to have a port number. So the protocol, as a matter of fact, most of the time is going to translate into port number. And finally, we have MAC addresses. So based on this, you can say that I can just make sure that different types of flows are separable from the others. And each flow can be sent over one of the links. So you have something like a port channel, but port channel under the hood is multiple links that work in coordination. Only one of the links can be used for each one of the flow. Now, you need to consider the amount of data on each of the flows because some of the flows have very huge amount of data. Some of them have very little amount of data. So this means that both links, in my case, for example, are not going to be utilized the same. One of them is going to be, for example, utilized to the max. The other one may be utilized only 50%. And sometimes that's going to be the opposite. One of them is going to be max. The other one is going to be under 50% or something like that. So flow is going to decide uh, which one of the links is going to be uh, selected to uh, send the amount of data. And also... This is not about just the flow. If a hash of the flow is going to decide which of the links is going to be utilized. So the first packet is going to be checked based on the information that we have here. A hash is going to be created. And that hash is going to say if we are going to send the flow on this link or on this link. So that is just the basics. But let's see this in action. What I have is NX1 and NX2 in here. So if I just go to here on NX1, I'm going to show interface status. First of all, I want to show you that interfaces by default on Nexus switches are disabled, which means that they are shut down. Also, they are in routed mode, which means that they are in layer 3. So if I want to have a layer 2 links, I need to make sure that they are in switch port mode. How can I do that? I just go to the interfaces and select them. So in my topology, I have E11 and E12. I'm going to go to both switches. Let me just bring this up so that I can send commands at the same time to both switches. So in my topology, I have Ethernet 11 and 12. I'm going to go to both switches here. I'm going to say Ethernet 11 to 2. You can see that I do not really need to specify range command here because by default on nexus we do not really need it i'm going to say switch port that is going to convert the interface into switch port mode and then i'm going to say switch port mode trunk um, i do not really need to specify anything about this because this is going to by default choose that one q as the 
uh, trunking protocol. So the next thing I say, I should say no shot. And after that, if I say show IP, show interface status, and hit enter, it says that these two now are connected. They are not disabled anymore. They are trunking and they are in full deflex 10 gigabit per second. Now what I'm going to do in this case is to say show interface trunk because now I want to see whether the interfaces are trunking here. You can see that only one of the interfaces is trunking. The other one says the CP forwarding is none. That is because the spanning tree has stopped this from working. And here it says VTP is not enabled because VTP by default is not enabled on Nexus switches. Let's see the result on the other side. So if I say show interface trunk and check this, you can see that these two are, uh, let's say in air disabled. No, they are just working here. Now, just checking this spanning tree result is going to give us some more information. So if I say show a spanning tree, I have only VLAN 1. So you can see that what I have is this. On NX1, it says that I am the root. That is because of the MAC address here, which is lower than the MAC address on the other side. And because this is the root, you can see that all the interfaces are in designated forwarding mode. But if I go to NX2, one of the interfaces is in alternate blacking mode, which is not desirable. In my case, I need to just use all the interfaces at once. So let's create the port channel. Creating the port channel is very easy. You just go under the range of the interfaces. You need to make sure that all the interfaces in the range have the same configuration, because if they don't, then there is going to be an error. Then you are going to say channel group, and then channel group is going to have a number. The number is something like 12 bits long, so you can have a huge range of numbers, but you should know that the number is going to be locally significant. Significant. You don't have to, you know, uh, make sure that on both sides you are using the same number. So I'm just going to go with number one, and then. That's it. I can hit enter or I can say the mode is what? There is only one mode supported and that's going to be LACP. You can see that we have active and passive. Active means that we are going to send some hello messages to the other side. Or let's say that we are just saying to the other side that we are ready to create the port channel if you want to. The other side can be active or can be passive. Passive means that they are just listening. They do not really send any offer to the other side to create the port channel. But if someone offers, then they are going to accept it and they are going to create the port channel. What about on? On says that it doesn't really matter what the other side say. I'm going to create the port channel here. But most of the time, if you want to have full control over everything, you can just go with mode on and I'm going to do this here. So I'm going to create this and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to say channel group uh, one or whatever number that you want to have mode is on. Now it takes a few seconds to create the channel group and then you can just say show port channel port channel summary to see what is happening. So it says it is in switched mode. Uh, this means that layer two this is capital S. This is good uh, because we just converted the course into switched mode. And it says it is uh, up. U is good here. But if you say, for example, uh, small s, let's see, small s here is not a good thing. It means that the port is suspended. Here we have P. P means that they are up and working and without any problem. Both of the links, of course, are uh, working in this thing. And you see that the protocol is none because we decided to have the port channel on and we did not go with active or passive, which uh, indicates LACP. The same thing should happen on the other side. So if I just go to here and say show port channel summary, I should see that both of the links are working just fine. Now, let's see the result of a uh, spanning tree. So if I say show spanning tree and hit enter, now you can see that 
I have one per channel interface that I have. I don't have multiple interfaces. Uh, you can see that in here, before creating the port channel, I had two interfaces, and each one of them had its own role. In my case, for example, one of them was blocking, but here you can see that there is just one port channel, and it is forwarding, and um, in switch 2, of course, you can see that this is not the root, um, because the root is going to be uh, NX1 root bridges here. So you can see that in here, again, the port channel is in forwarding mode. This one is the root bridge in my case. Okay, now that I have created this, I should be able to send the flows over the links to the other side. But like I said, for each flow, one of the links is going to be utilized. So how can you just alleviate this and say that I am trying to utilize both of the links? I'm not just sending my flows over one of the links. One of the ways is to configure the load balancing here. So load balancing should be configured in global configuration. What I'm going to say, uh, ether channel, uh, let's say port channel in my case, because this is not a catalyst switch. On catalyst switch, you say ether channel. It's a port channel load balancing. And you see the methods here. You can just select the type of uh, load balancing that you want to have. If I just say, uh, normally if I just go to here and say show port channel, it doesn't really say what kind of load balancing is being used. If I just say show port channel, and after that load balance, here it is, it will tell me that by default, source destination MAC address is going to be used for uh, non-IP flows and for IP flows of course we are going to use source and destination IP and also the L4 port and the rotation is going to be zero. So how can I decide which one of these is better? Uh, based on the traffic that is originated on the source or uh, received on the destination, we can select which type is going to be more suitable for us. Let's say that I have multiple clients here, and all of them try to connect to one file server here. So, the destination IP address or MAC address is just one, and port number is going to be just one. So, destination is not going to be a good, uh, good way to, you know, load balance. I should use uh, the source port and because source port is going to be selected by random and or sorry sorry source IP or source MAC address because they are more diverse than what we have in the destination. In this case source is going to be a better option. Let's say that I have uh, something like a proxy here and then everything is going to send the tra traffic to this proxy and this proxy is going to be only one uh, point here, and the other side is going to be one again here. So again, here you can just select one of the other ways. Uh, in, in this case, I cannot really do anything special because, again, the source and destination are not very diverse. What if I have uh, something like this? I have an application here which is used on the web Basis, maybe some computers connect to this web application. This web application is trying to connect to database on the other side. Then again, this application is going to be only one source, and the database on the other side is going to be one destination. Again, one of the links is going to be utilized. If I have multiple database servers on the other side, then the destination is more diverse than the source. I would go with destination. Uh, load balancing. Uh, what if I have multiple clients on here, multiple clients on there, then both destination and source are uh, diverse, then I would go with uh, source and destination IP or source and destination MAC based on the type of traffic which is layer 2 or layer 3. Going back to here, um, you can see that we are using source and destination because by default we assume that we have multiple clients here and multiple 
uh, you know, destinations on the other side. And based on that, we are going to use destination and source Mac, destination and source IP. In my case, I'm not going to select anything other than that. But if you want to do that, what you need to do is to say port channel, load balance, and then these are the options. You can see source, you can see destination, or you can have source and destination at the same time. In my case, for example, source and destination at the same time. Now you can select any of these. If there is going to be only VLAN MAC address, then you can go based on VLAN here. If there are multiple MACs for layer 2, you go with this. If you have layer 4 information like port number to connect to FTP, uh, HTTP, or different other services, then airport port could be um, added to here. And, and all of these, of course, are different methods to select uh, what we have here. Also, one thing which is very important to understand is this. If I want to create a port channel, First of all, I would check to see what numbers are available. Because when you, uh, you know, select the, when you have this command to enable a port channel on an interface, if that port channel is already there, then interface is going to be added to that port channel, which in my case, for example, I do not really want to add my interface to an existing port channel. I want to create a new port channel. So what I need to do is to, first of all, check to see whether that port channel number is free or not. So what I'm going to say is to say show port channel. And you can see that one of them is usage. So you say show port channel usage. It says that number one is used. Number two up to 4096 is uh, available. So if I want to add my interface to number one, the command is going to be port channel one, mode, whatever. And if I want to create a new port channel, then I would go with number 2 to 4096 because they are available in my case. Okay, so this is what we had about port channel. And I hope that this information is useful for you. Do not forget to leave comments and uh, give me feedback on the videos.